we probably rented 50 mailboxes. What's the cost? We started at $10 a month with a three month minimum or a hundred dollars for the year. I'm not making enough money. So I'm have to raise my prices and mm -hmm. I hate that. We're going to need to replace you at the store. Yes. As soon as possible. Definitely. So that you can be focused on what you do best, which is bringing people into the store, thinking through that process, Definitely. creating strategy. I surprised Dallas entrepreneur Tiffany with great seats to the Boys to Men concert with my family. Tiffany! How are you? Doing well. How are you? Doing well, too. It's, it's, a, it's a busy day. We're going to get right into it. Um, first of all, let's just talk a little bit about this Boys to Men show. <laughs> it was amazing. Yeah. We were basically on stage. Like I've never been that close at any concert ever before. So it was like they were singing to me. It was amazing. Wonderful. Thank you so much. It was amazing. I loved it. I loved it. You were so welcome. Uh, I, I had you there with my family. It was your VIP moment. Yes. I saw some footage of you holding the rose. I got a rose. I got a rose. And it was so funny. He threw it to me twice. And the first time it went over my head and I couldn't catch it. And I turned around and when I turned back, he looked at me and was like, <laughs> it was like, this is me. And it threw it right at me. <laughs> you remember which one said, gave it to you? You know what? I'm so caught up in the moment. At first I was saying one yay, but it was probably Nathan. Like I'm oh. going through, I was so caught up. I couldn't believe I, when I left, I was like, who gave this to me? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the, that's the dream. Most people you know, some people will get those tickets in the front row just to get that rose wow. at the end of the night because they know that they do that. I mean, they, boys to men and how they sound. They were amazing. Like still really good. Yeah. And, you know, like very engaging. Of course, the storytelling was really good. The singing was really good. Um, and, you know, they had, you know, choreographed and all kinds of stuff. Really, it was really, it was a really good show. I it love was that. really good show. I love that. Well, I'm so excited. And what we're going to do now, we're going to take a few minutes okay. and really just do a deep dive on your company and what you want out of, out of life and work okay. and all of that. Okay. We've known each other for a while. Let's first talk just briefly about how we've known each other. Okay. Over how were we first introduced? Um, I was stalking you on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> so um, when I first started trying to learn about what startups were, I had um, this business idea. I didn't, I didn't know the word startup, right? So I just started Googling and looking up stuff. And then I came across, uh, I drove to work. Um, it wasn't a long way, but I, I wanted to listen to something that would feed me, right? So mm -hmm. I started looking at podcasts. I didn't know what podcasts were. Like it was all really new to me. So I found the Gimlet podcast. And um, I think the first thing that I did like I was looking for black entrepreneurs, right? And so somehow I came across a Gimlet and I was like, okay, she's from Dallas. And I was like, who is she? Let me find her. I'm going to follow her. And then like you had tweeted something and I and I said something about you were amazing and you retweeted. I was like, oh my God, she <laughs> retweeted me. I was like, oh my God. Like it was, and, and it's just been from there, and then I I messaged you, I think, and I was like, hey, I'd love to work with you one day. Uh, I'm not sure what your needs are, but I'd like to fit in. And you was like, check in with me from time to time. And I was like, every month, I'm going to message you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, hey, just checking in. And of course, I went to Backstage's website, and I had this business idea that I've still not completely abandoned at this point, but I was like on the website and pitching the idea, and I like... I don't even remember uploading my resume, but at some point I uploaded my resume. Yeah. And you, a couple of years go by and then I get an email. Hey, we've got this position available. Would you be interested? Uh, heck yeah. I wasn't even <laughs> looking for work at the time. It was That's me. So funny. And I got an email from Christy and I was like, like you guys are celebrities at this point, right? So I'm I'm stalking you. I'm stalking uh, Christy. I'm stalking um, Brittany and Chacho. So I'm like watching everything you guys are doing. So when I got that email, I, I thought I was dreaming. I was like, wait, 
how did I, how did they get my resume? And I, and I had to have put it on the website at some point. You, you sent it as an email. Okay. Okay. And when I was looking for, um, an executive assistant for the team, mm -hmm. for the partners, right? Let me, let me go check and see if she's available. And it was perfect timing because it was mid pandemic and I was working as a executive assistant, um, and doing kind of uh, accounting stuff for a law firm here in Dallas. And it was just, it was, you know, the, the, the people getting killed and the black lives matter and all of this is right. And nobody's saying anything at work and I'm feeling depleted. Yeah. And watching what you do and see how much you care about people. When that email came across, I was like, I'm there. I don't know wow. what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to get this. If I get the interview, I'm going to get the job. That was wow. And that's exactly what happened. That's great. That's wonderful. So Tiffany, what, tell me the name of your company now and what it is you do. So my company is Legacy Mail and Shipping. I don't know if you can see my shirt. <laughs> Love it. And I'm going to be taking notes, by the way. Okay. So my company is Legacy Mail and Shipping. We are the only shipping store in Oak Cliff area here in Dallas. We, um, at one point we did FedEx, UPS, and USPS. We're not doing UPS right now because they were really expensive. And so mm -hmm. I'm going to get that back. But we uh, provide uh, shipping services for the community. I was shocked to find out there wasn't another, you know, shipping store in the area. You have to go three, four, and seven miles away for shipping. And so uh, in that, you know, we provide shipping services, but we also have mailboxes for small business owners or people who just need a private mail address with the uh, you know, the porch pirates and things going on. So uh, it was important to me to provide that service to people. And with that, we're working to create an ecosystem of small businesses here in Oak Cliff who utilize the store so that we could, you know, promote each other, you know, help each other along the way. My goal was, had been like, they say like, you know, the black dollar doesn't circulate the community you know, more, okay, so how do we do that? We have to be, be those resources. So how do we do that? We have to create the things that we need. Shipping service is something that we need. I have two college students. We're driving all over the city to ship packages to them just to avoid the post office. And mm -hmm. I'm like, I couldn't believe it when I realized that there wasn't a service in the area. So I was like, we have to do it. And um, probably prematurely, I did it, you know, without doing I, I researched for about nine months but there was still a lot I didn't know and I'm learning that now still I'm things that I'm learning but it was something that was necessary and so now we're kind of working backwards to get the community to know that we're here doing the yeah. marketing and stuff now yeah. which is what I should have been doing that first month before mm -hmm. we were building out the store um but yeah, yeah. it's been uh can interesting I right can now. I say you know I think I think that I don't know if I knew your your reasoning before. Okay. Because we, I'll I'll set you. You worked with us, uh, and then you 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 left to go start this, right? So that was really really great. And we had layoffs at backstage too. So I won't. Right. I'll say it both. It's been both. But you right. you built it. When I heard you were doing this, I was so excited. But that intention of uh wanting to build the things instead of us spending the dollars elsewhere. Yes. Building and, and having to travel far and wide to get it. Yes. yes. Oak Cliff, let's, for anyone who didn't grow up in Dallas, like I did, and you, and you were there, what sort of demographics is Oak Cliff? It's mostly black and Hispanic. There are some pockets of, you know, wealthy white people in Oak Cliff, but, but the predominant, predominantly is a uh, black and Hispanic. Um, and then there was like an article last year that talked about Dallas being, it was like a hub for new businesses among black and around, I mean, among black and brown people. And I was like, this is the perfect opportunity for this, for this yeah. shipping store. If all of yeah. these people are starting businesses, they're going to need shipping addresses. They're going to need their own, you know, a business address. And I'm like, this is the time, right? Yeah. Um, and we had Monica in our first VIP day yes. video and she's in uh -huh. Dallas as well. Yes. And she has, you know, these great ideas. So if you haven't seen that video, definitely check it out. We'll make sure I'll to link it. For sure. <laughs> and you both, you both just have such great plans for, for this, for this city. Yeah. So they're both so important. Okay. Let's get into some numbers. Okay. And you can share what you want. You don't have to share what you don't want to, but it'll help me kind of 
put the pieces together of how, how we might move forward. Okay. So you work there, you work there full time, more than full time. Yes. What mm -hmm. hours are you working there? We'll just go through a list of questions here. Right. So the store is open from nine to six. I'm usually there about eight thirty until about seven, eight sometimes. Um Monday through Friday. And then Saturday we're uh ten to four. Um my daughter is just graduated from college, so she's there helping me um now. She's been this last couple of weeks, she's been full time. Uh they are helping me with the marketing, social media, because her degree is in communication. So she's taking over my social media uh, to try to help me be more consistent with that. Um, but yeah, that we're doing <laughs> yeah. all the hours. And I'm there on Sundays too, um, because that's when I go to do my, not just cleaning the store, but just my planning and, mm -hmm. you know, spreadsheets or reports and those kinds of things. Yeah. Paint a picture of what the store looks like. How big is it? So it's a thousand square feet. It's not that big. Uh, we have 160 mailboxes. We have um, another one of the great features of the store is my mailbox customers actually have, I've been giving them the opportunity to have shelf space. Some of them, this is their first time in the store. They mm -hmm. have, um, I have books there. I have um, my books, of course, that I started journals or whatever. I have um, oils. Um, I'm trying to, give them shelf space and I want it to be almost kind of like a hallmark. So things that, you yeah. know, you know, um, uh, greeting cards and um, of course, shipping supplies and boxes and things like that too. But I wanted to get, you know, more, I want it to be a hub for, you know, my other, my mailbox customers who are business sure. owners as well. Sure. And then of the 160 mailboxes, how many, like how many are full and how many are remaining? We've rented... I wish I knew this number by heart. We've we've went rented three, six, nine, twelve. We've probably rented fifty mailboxes. Fifty. Okay. And then what what's the cost? So it's we started at ten dollars a month with a three month minimum or a hundred dollars for the year. Um we were trying to undercut, you know, all the because the post office has mailboxes, but they're really expensive. Mm -hmm. So trying to beat their cost, that was only supposed to be like a two or three month thing. It turned out being a year because we, we opened March 1st. So we are setting the new prices to go up on March 1st in honor of our one year, whatever. What will they go up to? They'll go up to 150 a year instead of 100. Instead of 99, it'll be 150 and then uh, $15 a month with a three month minimum. And then- on the so the you make money printing those yes and then you make money through shipping because whatever the shipping cost is you're going to add a fee to that is that yeah, right a portion of it yes uh -huh. so the system that we use calculates based on what the standards are and what my account is with FedEx uh and with USPS which if you, USPS is just regular price right but um so like if if you ship if you're shipping a package and it's twelve dollars I'll get you know, like 20% of that. And so you can set that markup based on what you want. So when I go in the system, it'll, they, when I was training, they were telling me the standard is that people charge 50% markup. Mm. I thought that was high for Oak Cliff, mm. but all the time it's like, I'm not making enough money. So I'm gonna have to raise my prices. And mm -hmm. I hate that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think as the store grows, we'll be able to go back down, but I had to go up to, uh, it's like 40% right now. No, it's at 40% now. Okay. And then um what is maybe your 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 monthly or your weekly take? I've not taken anything yet. Well, I mean or what do I what the story Yeah, what's the revenue okay. and then what's the take? You say you take 40% or 20%. So like how much is transacted in a given week or month, whichever is easier to calculate. Okay. So so um, this last month we did right at 3000, it cost about 4,000 to run the store. Um, so, um, uh, we're still trying to figure out, you know, adding more things to the store so that we can reach that. Okay. Um, so 3000 on top of the, what the real shipping costs were. So 3000. No, well, the 3000 was all of the revenue that came in. Okay. And then, but 60 to 80% of that went to actually shipping. Right. True. True. Yeah. Oh, so well, and then was, 
that was after i'm sorry so after the the, the fedex and all of that is paid that's what we were able oh, okay to yes. okay yes. So three thousand and it takes about four thousand to run the store as it is today right and then how busy is the store like how much more could you really take on i could take uh, you know it's so crazy because of course some days we may have one or two customers and then some days we'll have five customers standing right in front of us so we could definitely take on more which is what we were trying to figure out what else can we do maybe we do drop shipping maybe we do you know so i'm trying to figure all of that out um but we're definitely have room for a lot <laughs> yeah what do you do today to let people know you exist there? So we do the social media, of course, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Nextdoor. Um, we also have postcards and flyers. Uh, the postcards we started sending out um, here recently, flyers. We go to Walmart. Um, I probably go to Walmart once or twice a week because when we were putting flyers on the cars, we got in trouble. They was like, you can't do that. So I went inside and I talked to the manager and she said, no, you can't do that, but you can let the cashiers know. So they let other people know. So I go in there once or twice a week and I talk to a different cashier. Hey, uh, just let you know that we have a shipping store right across here because at one point Walmart couldn't print out the shipping labels. So I was telling them to let people know that we can print the shipping labels at our store. Um, and uh, and then I go to like the financial center at Walmart because that's where a lot of people go to, you know, to ask about uh, mm -hmm. FedEx or those kinds of things. So I just go up there once or twice a week and I'm, I have flyers with me. I'm passing them out to people in the store mm -hmm. and um, I go to the neighborhood association meetings. Um, mm -hmm. I've been trying to, I started my newsletter, of course. Um, so I've been just trying to figure out ways. Yeah. And you're doing all this while working at the store all day. And so right. it, it's a, it's a lot. And okay. So if you, if you make maybe 3000 a month now, if you do the math on that, do you, what do you think that ceiling is for you for this store? If like if people are in there all the time, you have everything kind of booked, um, on the shipping side, where do you think that is? Where do I think? Do you the, think it is like, oh, we could actually make 10,000 a month if it was really busy? Or do you think the ceiling is higher or lower than that? Definitely higher, 15. I, so I have a little chart here that tells me where, what my goals are. So for the yeah. store, it's 15 to 20K because that's the standard uh, based on research, what a store like that could do, mm -hmm. um, 15 to 20K. And um, right now my goal is to uh, to get to 5K. And every now and then we've done four. Um, I was expecting Christmas for it to do four, but it, it, it didn't do that. Um, but so, yeah. So just trying to get um, get to the 5K right now would be great. I think 10, I think 15 to 20 would be good. I have, I'm a spreadsheet weirdo. Like I don't know it that well, but I have these spreadsheets of what the store will look like at this amount and how many people we can hire and mm -hmm. what the rates will be. Um, and so I've been, you know, visioning that, you know, hoping that it'll, you know, expecting or when it yeah. does come, what it'll look like. Yeah. I think one of the things that we're going to need to make happen for you and you might say, yeah, I wish too, but we're going to need to replace you at the store. Yes, as soon as possible. Definitely. So that you can be focused on what you do best, which is bringing people into the store, thinking through that process, Definitely. creating strategy. Um, it 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 does seem, work out. Sounds like because you have that influx, sometimes you won't have anybody at the store. You can think through things and right do that, which is great. So it, it, the way you're doing this now is the is the right way because it's okay. it's the way you can. Right. The, exactly. Um. So a couple of things that are coming to mind as I'm looking at this. First of all, at the $15, well, at the $150 a year uh, for it, uh, your your mailboxes, if you were to sell all 160 or have them all rented, that's about $24,000 um, a year. Okay. That's $2,000 a month. Yeah. So it's not going to be the bulk. It's going to be 10, 20% of what you right. do. Right. But if we can figure out a way to make the mailboxes some sort of lead magnet, 
Mm. There's some sort of reason for people to come in. It might also be that they're even cheaper than that. I mean, that's cheap and I don't want to go, I don't want to ever undersell. Right. It, so it may not be that the cost, it may be something else. It may be that you, as a membership, there's right. one, mm. the membership based. Right. And only members can have access to these mailboxes. Right. Your membership costs 300 a year mm -hmm. and you get a mailbox with it and then you get a couple of shipping, you know, you get the things with it. So that's just something that's popping up in my head that we can think about a little bit. I like that. Another thing is, what are you, are you doing anything on LinkedIn? Yes, I am on LinkedIn as well. I forgot about that. Sorry. Yes. I, the store has a page. Um, mm -hmm. And my daughter posts to those and I've shared things that I've, I think you've retweeted, reshared something I did on LinkedIn before. So yes, I'm on LinkedIn. Um, I'm trying to be more consistent. So my daughter is, is taking over those things. Um, and so we're trying to get them so that we're weeks out so that, because she's a graduate and if she gets a job, she's going to be gone. So I need them planned out for the, mm -hmm. so I'm, yeah, I am on LinkedIn and I'm trying to, post there more so, so yes. with both LinkedIn and Facebook have you been able to do ads or is it all organic so I did ads on Facebook I've not done ads on LinkedIn uh I, I I think I've done Google ads um but I feel like it's so weird so I just made a post on Facebook recently I feel like my page may have been um shadow banned at some point because even some of my closest friends don't know that I have a store. And I'm like, how do you not know that? Like I'm posting, like, so let's just say this before. I ha would get a lot of activity on my page. Well, since I was posting about him and people were reporting my stuff, I stopped getting as much engagement. So I posted again on Facebook and I said, hey, I think I've been shadow banned. Could you please go back and follow my page? Because I used to have followers and I think it's like it wiped all of them out. So trying to get that engagement back up and letting people know that I'm there and that I have a store and that, you know, I'm active on I, social media. I, 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 I can't say yes or no to that. But what I can say is that I think you need, there. I think with a very specific strategic ad spin, mm -hmm. I think, on LinkedIn particularly okay. you, well, because they are so precise okay. I wouldn't necessarily do Google because it's okay. not it does not attached to an uh it's not attached to a, a uh, community okay so mm -hmm. with, with LinkedIn and Facebook if an ad someone who sees your ad could also become a follower that's a, a great benefit to it I think that I don't think you should for I hope you know this but you shouldn't be promoting to anybody who's outside of 10 miles of your zip code right it needs to be all because you that's the benefit that you have of being a local company you're right the about queen, it the queen of oak cliff right you can own it because you're the only one there with a yeah. store right so you want to be hyper hyper local Treating online the same way you treat handing somebody a flyer at Walmart. Oh. So you can do that with both LinkedIn and Facebook. Both of them give you. Now, I have more experience uh, today with LinkedIn ads, even though I've, I've done Facebook ads for 20 years. Uh, I stopped doing it a few years ago. So on LinkedIn, you can get down to the zip code. You can get down to what kind of, is it a, is it a person who has a company? Is it a person who is a decision maker? Is it a person? It's very specific. And you can do $50, $100 total. So you can do a week and do 100 and say, okay, 17 people clicked on this. Does it come, does the ad have a use this code when you come in and get X? Mm -hmm. Or does it have a, we only have 100 mailboxes. Mm. Do you want to have, because so many people could use that, that, uh, company address. Mm -hmm. I have one. Yep. I have one and I love it because right. it's just so helpful to me in LA. So, so many people need what you have. They just don't know about it. And yes, 
we're not able to reach your direct followers and friends, but that's okay because what we are going to reach are the tens of thousands of people who live in Oak Cliff. True. And yeah. who who you're going to go after. So those two places, Facebook and LinkedIn particularly, are going to look at your organic content, just typing out posts, letting people know about things, kind of making it like thinking about why does this matter to them? Mm -hmm. Why are they looking at it? Give them something that it that matters. And it's really about the psychology of did you know like do you don't did you know that you could have a business uh address that is not your home if you're a small business mm -hmm. owner in Oak Cliff. And you're saying the word Oak Cliff, the words Oak Cliff. Right. Like your ad, so that's it's it's uh, uh, organic content and it's also ads. And in the ads, it's saying, "Oh, Cliff, business owners, did you know that you can have a, a bit, you know, this this place, or did you know that? Um, are you spending? Are you spending? Are you wasting? Oh no, here's a good one. Did you know that the average Oak Cliff business owner wastes up to three hours per week driving to ship? Oh, I love that. <laughs> I so love that. Doing different things that are saying, okay, what, why do they care? What's going to get their attention to care? Because you are offering so many different solutions to problems people have that they're so used to having that they yep. have forgotten that they're having. Yep. You're going to do is create solutions, and it doesn't have to be a lot two, three, one solution that you just become known for. I got you, Oak Cliff small business owners. And I wouldn't call them entrepreneurs, I wouldn't use that word. Okay, small business owner because it's so local. Yep, you want to talk to someone who may not even know what entrepreneur means right now or yep. may not consider themselves an entrepreneur. Mm. You want to talk to someone and say, you have a small business? Because a lot of people have small businesses. They do. They sell candles. They yep. are, are, do, do taxes for people. They do yep. hair. Yep. Then as, go, speaking of doing hair, then you can even go even more granular. And you're organic and you're paid on LinkedIn because a lot of people have LinkedIn and on Facebook. And what you're saying to them is, are you a so are you a, a hair professional in the uh, Oak Cliff area? Stop getting your business mail sent to your house mm. for just one hundred and fifty dollars a year during our special. You can have an entire business address that we handle for you. Come on in and check it out. I love that. <laughs> You're giving them solutions. The, the big piece of this is to really understand how much value you are bringing to other entrepreneurs, to other small business owners. Yep. It's not like they're doing you a favor to come on and support. You, we use that word. Can you come support the store? No, let us help you. Yeah, think about how much you're going to take off their plate that you know, and they may not know. It, you do it every day, so you might, it may be second nature to you. Mm -hmm. You may not realize it's ridiculous to drive seven miles to the to the uh, FedEx. Right. Yep. And I don't think it has to be a race to the bottom on pricing just because it's in Oak Cliff. I think that Oak Cliff is a, a, a burgeoning location. Yes, it is. A lot of money and a lot of upwardly mobile people. Yep. And they want all they care about is high quality. You're right is about high it. quality. Can I depend on you? Yep. Are you going to be there? Are you going to have my packages and help me ship and get my stuff to where it needs to go? Yep. I'm willing to pay what everybody else is paying because I just want high quality. Right. And if you if you if you go too low, it's just too many people to serve that you want right. that's not making enough money to serve them. That's true. So it, I I would start looking at your your store as a boutique, mm. high quality experience. It's an elevated experience, and if you do that, you're doing better than ninety nine percent of all mailing uh, locations because none of them do that. None of them do that. When I go there, it's like 
you know, somebody's going to put their piece of turkey leg on the table and say, come on over here, let me get your stuff and throw it over there. There's not, it has this sort of feeling of, oh God, I got to go to the mailing place. I wish yep. I did. But if, if instead it was sort of like, oh, I get to go over here and I get to ship something and I'm going to be treated well. And maybe, I don't know that there's seats there and there, maybe there's music, like nice music playing and it smells really good. And it's a very calming location. Like turn it into that because you have this physical location. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. Any yeah. any questions so far before I keep keep going here? No, I'm excited and and it's recorded, so I'll get to look at it again. So, <laughs> but it's going to be an uh, an episode. <laughs> oh, okay, but I'll okay, okay, but I love this. Okay, high quality experience. I like that, and that's funny because that's something that I've always wanted it to be a great experience. Uh, customer service is important to me. That's something that I've always kind of said to people, like maybe I should help people with customer service because that's important to me. When you come in, I want you to feel welcome. I want you to feel excited. I want you to feel like I'm here to help you just like you're, just like you're saying. So my daughter uh, is there now. And so she's learning to register. And I'm always telling her when people come in, even if you don't know them, make it feel like you've seen them before. Hey, how are you? Like, that's important to me. You want them to feel like I re you remember them, even if you don't, you know, uh, it's important because people need to feel like we're on their side and they're a part of this community and we're a part of this community. And like you said, this boutique or this membership is important to them. I want them to feel that. I like I'm, that. I'm thinking the membership might be really interesting for you because not all at once, but over time, you can start um, offering different things for the for the small business owner, right? Or for the creator, like think about my brother and and Angel mm -hmm. influencers and their media people, right? And so they may not think small business owner every time they think about themselves, but they there's a new terminology. There's creator, there's yeah. New, but for for that kind of person you could, this could be not only where they go ship something or pick something up, but it could be like, let's say, let's say you did, you spent a day researching grants for small business owners. Which is a part of something that I want to provide. Yes, definitely. Let's say that you, in order to learn about it, like they can come pick up a pamphlet that you yeah. have. Mm -hmm. Or journals that you have that have a resource, a one pager resource for mm -hmm. them. It's again, it. it's like how, what take away the mail part. Like the mail part is kind of like the last piece of it. Definitely. So yep. what, what could this be for with all the experience you have now in tech and startup yes. all yes. over the country now? You've worked with these yep. people. What it what would that look like? And I don't mean to go you know, all full, full scale and I'm going to be doing this, that, and the other. I'm saying like, if you could be a resource right. on the one service, right, then that will help you really start to think about every day when you're posting or running ads, what is bringing people in? Right. Why do they care? That needs to be the question every single time. Why would someone care? Yeah. What's in okay. it for them? Mm -hmm. And your your goal of getting to 10 15 thousand a month is there it's attainable so when you get to 10 and 15 thousand a month where do you want to go next like what is what does that mean if you get there for you is that like oh i can that's it i, I just sustain this and i'm good well so originally the first idea i had was this company called saturday contractor so saturday contractor was going to be an app that local contractors is is and in my mind i'm thinking just weekend type contracts weekend co kind of things and so it would be an app where they could bid on like let's say you're you need somebody to come and hang a shelf in your room you go on saturday contractor and like hey i'm looking for someone and then the contractor say oh i can do that for ten dollars or somebody said well i can do it for five dollars like that was originally the first idea that i had so when i started the the shipping company Everything to me had been about networking, right? So you create a network of contractors or you create a network of small businesses. And in that, like in my store, I have a bulletin board of 
of, of business cards of my customers so that people can come and find a resource that they need. All of it to me is the same. It's creating a network. So after Legacy Mail and Shipping gets up and running, the idea, I've already had two shopping centers come ask me to open a store in their location. I want to franchise it at some point, mm -hmm. but I need to get it up and running, get the model together, get everything so that it's functioning in a way that I can say, these are the steps that we take to get to here so that we, when we open store number two and store number three and store number four or whatever, that it's already planned and mapped out. Yeah, because what, what, like franchising for you, I think is a, an excellent idea. And I think that you can build your fortune on the franchising. Yes, the franchising, franchising is the, yeah. But if you franchise, you have to be able to say to someone, if you build a store, you get 10,000, you're going to be able to make 10,000 a month. And if you yourself can't make ten thousand a month, you're True. not able to say that to someone. True, X. True. So, so what you can do is what you're already doing, which is really look at this year as that proof of concept model. Mm -hmm. so it takes okay. a little bit of pressure off for you too. I wanted to. I want. I want your frame of mind to be very clear, and okay. not hindered by, oh, I'm not moving fast enough. I'm not growing fast enough. We're not making enough. Instead of thinking of this as it's a shop and I need to make a certain amount of money every month or we're not doing well, think of it as, no, this is an empire, right? the first brick of the empire. Yes. And this is my proof of concept lab. Yes. So everything that is even a dip or a mistake, I now have that information so that yes. when I franchise these out, they can all bypass all this. Exactly. That's yeah. it. So the idea is by December, you're doing 10,000 a month or more. I like that. Proof of concept. That's okay. what this, this is. This is the, this is the, uh, I don't want to say Tesla. <laughs> this is, uh, <laughs> this is the, the, the model, right? This is the, you know, how when people, when they're building houses in a development, they'll have the, right. the model house. Yes. That's what yes. This is. That's, That's what this is. Is. Yes. Yes. And then and then it grows. And I mean, if you get to the middle of the year and you're and you've tried everything and nothing is working, mm. what that teaches you is, oh, I, when I do the franchising of this or when I decide to do another thing, it has to be in a neighborhood that has at least X number of small businesses. Mm. Or you might say, you you know, like I said, none of this is failure. Right. So we talked a lot about small businesses, but what, is there another subgroup of people who need to ship too? Because people need to ship, right? Like, like mothers or like, is there a subgroup that is not necessarily doing it for business? Right. There but, definitely is in this area with SOC, um, South Oak Cliff High School being the championship football team for the last two or three years they have a lot of students going to college so that's what I saw me kids in college mothers who are shipping to their kids so yeah. I was trying to I was like how do I build a relationship with SOC so that you know which would take the advertising and marketing and stuff to another level because it's something that I haven't really been able to do this year yeah. advertising even if it was sponsoring something at the school, like I was trying to figure those things out. I mean, they do that all the time. You, any sports event, you can do that. They have their pamphlets that come out, their talent shows. You can get in that. You can put the poster of the football team on the, the window. You don't yeah. already have. That, that is a conversation. You can go in and just meet with the teach with the principal or the vice principal and say, I, I have this. Uh, that does remind me though. I, I may have asked you this before, just in terms of, but have you ever gone to the apartment buildings, to the leasing offices of the apartment buildings? Well, I've called, I've reached, I've not been able to go there because I'm at the store when they're open. Yeah. So that's been the issue. So, which is why I was trying to train my daughter. And I have a cousin that comes in like Monday and Tuesday. I'm trying to get someone comfortable enough or get them comfortable enough to be in the store so that I can be out, so that I can do things. Even yeah. at the deck, like the 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 other, um, the entrepreneurial um, centers here, like they have events, but they're during the day. And I'm like, how do I get there? So trying to get them comfortable enough to be there, even if it's just an hour or two for me to go out and do things, 
that's something that I've been working toward too, because I need to do that. Let's talk about that because that is, that is holding you back from several things and from growth. Yes, for sure. In order to, I think, in order to do everything that you do at the store, it's probably hard to, to train someone, but can you, can you, and you're, you know, I'm reading this book called buy back your time mm. and they find someone who can do 80%. A Ooh, good job. Not a hundred percent, because that don't exist. You're going to be the best person to do it. But is there somebody who can do eighty percent as good a job as you? Mm. And can you train them quickly so that you? Can, I mean, if you had one day a week that you could go out and be and meet at ten apartment buildings, would be amazing. After reaching out offices and say when people move in, when when you when you send messages to people, can you put us in your emails? Can you put us in your physical mail and like give them a kickback oh that's good say you you're getting commission 10 percent on anything somebody comes in here do that with apartment buildings do that with other small businesses that refer you that are related to anything like that that, that get traffic partnerships can yep. you do that there might also be something in the hours that you keep hmm. i know that people that the up i mean that fedex and the and us uh, ups comes to the store often hmm. can you be off 12 to 2 and that's hmm. your lunch hour that you're just not available and when is there an hour or two that people just do not come to the store you know what? That's something that I haven't tracked because it was never something I considered because I was trying to be available to catch anybody that came that way. Yeah. <laughs> so well, if you think about the math on that, you're yeah. open because you're, you, there's not even a number that can say what you're being paid an hour because it's, it, it's, it's inv invaluable. It's whatever the company is. Per right. Hour. Your ability, like, if you have, if you're open for four hours in a day where only one person comes in, yes, of course, you're going to miss that person, but you can start training by having different hours. Mm. You just have different hours, or it could be one day a week. A lot of places. Think about hair places who don't do Sundays and Mondays. Think about places who we are simply not open on this day of the week. Mm. Well, every other week we're off this day. Right. I think you've got to buy back your time to quote Dan Martell's book one way or the other you either got to train somebody as like within two weeks to be able to take over you can be out all day or you find some time that you control and say we're closed gone fishing and you go and get you because if you don't do that you go get you some more customers because if you don't do this you're going to be stagnant for a very long time so it's worth missing the one person who was supposed to come in you can even put up a notice you know, put on your website, put it on the thing on w next Wednesday, the 25th or whatever the day is, right? Next mm -hmm. Wednesday, we will be closed from 12 to 4. For for 12 to 4, that's it. Mm -hmm. For the second Tuesday of every month, we are closed for. And if you can do that or one of the two, everything's going to change. I like that. I could see, I could see, um, doing an hour or so maybe a couple of hours every other week or something I have to yeah because the thing is I need to figure out what that rhythm is and how it works uh or even if it was even if I trained I, I gotta figure it out because mm -hmm. my daughter is getting more comfortable in the store she's picking up stuff a lot faster than my cousin had been um but she is also um like my cousin has this entrepreneurial mind, like she's a business mind though. Like she's, and then my daughter is just, you know, she's a young mind, right? Can your cousin be in the store at the same time as your daughter? On Monday and Tuesday is when they're there, is when she's there. And they, can they work, can they work together to run the store while you're out doing stuff? That's the goal. That is definitely the goal. That's something that we've talked about, uh, but just trying to get them comfortable. And, and, and I don't know if it was, I think, I think Angie's Angel uh Angel said to me about is nobody's gonna take care of your baby. Like you take care of your baby, but I have to let that go in the sense that 
they can be there while I go do other things. So I'm trying to hey, Ken, do me a favor. The next step, get okay. the audible, unless you love reading physical books, I would say get the audible so you can start right away. I love there's, audible. There's two books I want you to get. Give me a second to, to grab them. I, I have two done. really good books right here. <laughs> <laughs> thank you thank you you can show that again if you'd like I won't mind <laughs> yes and proof that I bought them even though I worked for you at, <laughs> at one point <laughs> okay so these are the two books I want you to buy okay on audible and I want you to listen to them you can listen okay. to them at a time or at the same time it doesn't matter which order buy back your time by Dan Martell okay the clockwork by Mike McCallowitz. Okay. Clockwork by Mike McCallowitz. Design your business to run itself. And buy back your time by Dan Martell. Okay. I, both, they were written 10 years apart from each other. I discovered them at the same time. They have changed my life. Mm. Together. Okay. I'm probably going to do a video, a whole video on that. I want okay. you to listen to it. You there's some pieces you'll be able to do today, and there'll be some pieces that'll be aspirational mm -hmm. because you are starting so early, you know, you're at the early stages. Mm -hmm. But some even if you do 10% of it and you open up a day for mm -hmm. yourself to go do this real stuff that's gonna change the trajectory of your company and of your empire, it's worth it. Okay. I love it. Yeah, and I, mean, I have Audible. I listen to both of your books, so I do. I have a subscription. Yeah, I did the lowest one, but I I love Audible. So yes, I'm I'm adding them to my cart like right now. <laughs> we and I I want to uh, as we wrap up. I also want to just understand, like I mean, to um, recognize that oh, I wish we were only talking about building a company, but on top of that, we're talking about being a black woman in America. And on top of that, we're talking about being a mother. You're talking about being a mother. Yes. On yes. top of that, a caretaker. Yes. And there's so much more to, oh, you know, if I could just have, like these two men that I just told you, both white men, they both have very interesting stories, backstories. They, it wasn't a piece of cake for either of them. Mm, okay. But, and however, <laughs> they are not a black woman in America in 2024. That's real. So everything they say in these books can be applied to a degree. Okay. So I would take that with a grain of salt. I do adore them. I think I think that over the next three months, there is transformative stuff here in your company. I appreciate that. And I think it all starts with that foundation of why you're doing it. Right. Yeah. Because you're doing it really for other people. And if the other people don't in return come back, then that's, I think it's it's fine to say April and May to just say, it, should I keep going with this? Does mm -hmm. this make sense? Mm -hmm. does, does the market call for it? Right. I happen to believe that with the few things we talked about here and other things that you implement yourself, that it does call for it. I believe that Oak Cliff was a brilliant move by you to put this particular service in this particular place. So let's see what happens. I appreciate that. And, you know, I've had people come into the store and cry because I was there because they can't get to DeSoto to the UPS store. Mm -hmm. They can't get downtown. And like it was an older lady. She doesn't drive. Her neighbor brought her. She was not going to take her to Duncanville. Oh. And just that stuff motivates me all the time. Like that's why we're here. So just getting people to know that we're here, yeah. it, it will make a world of difference. So that motivates me and I definitely am looking forward to implement some of the things that you that most of probably all of the things that you shared with me today. Yeah. Um, here's one last piece and, and I'm going over my own time, but here's one last piece. There are people who are watching this all the way through from all over the country and all over the world. Mm -hmm. And those people who have listened to this, taken notes for their own company and are rooting for you. They want to be able to support the store, even though they're not going to use it physically. So I have an idea. Can you show your shirt again? Yes, sure. <laughs> Stand up a little bit. 
legacy oh get a little close because it's like blurred out see it now okay maybe okay. it has to be a little further back maybe if i do the do this yeah that's it legacy <laughs> mail shipping legacy mail and so shipping i so if you were to throw something so do you have those t-shirts or did you just get the one made I had a few made. I need to get more for sure. Okay. So I have a t-shirt person who does okay. all my shirts. I have two actually. One who does them, who does them now. And then I have one in Jackson, Mississippi who does great shirts. Okay. What I'm suggesting is before this comes out, this will come out um, probably two weeks from now. Okay. Something to that effect. Let's talk about a landing page for your t-shirts on your website. Okay. You're selling your t-shirts. Anybody who's watching this will put this not only, and this is for the editor, Rook, not only am I saying it now, but you're gonna put this at the top of the of the video. Okay. Whoever wants to buy your t-shirt to support what you're doing, and you're gonna make it part of a package, you're gonna charge a good price for it because it's gonna be like they are legacy members remotely. Right. Okay. And we have and we have virtual mailboxes too through iPostal One. So you have virtual mailboxes, but they're they have a they have an Oak Cliff address. It's through iPostal One and they have an address at my location. And then yeah. how do they see the mail? How do how does someone get the mail? It's through uh iPostal One has an app called Utility Zoom app. And so when they mail when their mail comes in, I scan it into the app and then they can see it from there. Is that something that you want to grow or is that something that sounds like it takes a lot of time? It's, the virtual mailbox has really been carrying the store. Really? So we, should have, we should have led with this. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Yeah, they've really been carrying the store. If somebody wants to get a virtual mailbox from you, how do they do it? What website do they go to on your they website? They can go to my website first, LegacyMailAndShipping.com. And then there's Legacy. virtual mailbox option. That'll yeah. take you so say, say, the, say the website again legacymailandshipping.com and we'll make sure to have that somewhere here there or the other legacy <laughs> mail and mail shipping and shipping and i want to rock that shirt oh yay you, if you make it to shirts and hoodies all day long okay okay so we have some plans we have some ideas uh we will go now but follow up with me in a few days okay or even sooner than that if you want to on certain bullet points Okay. And I can send you over this recording too, if you'd like. I would definitely love that. Thank you so okay. much. I know you're on your book tour. You got a lot going yeah. on. Thank you for yeah. taking some time. My I pleasure. You. Thank Let's you so much. Happen. Yes, I'm excited. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.